Okay, now that you have an understanding of what an atom is and the parts of an atom, we're going to look at how atoms are arranged on the periodic table. So this goes with learning target 16. You should be able to understand why the atomic model is the foundation for all chemistry using the periodic table. So after you've learned about the periodic table, you should be able to realize that atoms and how atoms are organized is the basic foundation for chemistry. It's how we learn about the matter that is on Earth and around us in the universe. Okay, so the periodic table is an organization of elements and it's arranged by increasing atomic number, which we will get into what an atomic number is. Now, if you want to take a look at the uh, periodic table, there is a link on the website it's under your note outline, okay? It's called Periodic Table Interactive. If you click on that, okay, the periodic table, okay, you can click on the table available here. When that happens, it'll take you to this website, okay? This website, you can click on any atom. Say I want to look at lithium, and it's going to give you a lot of information about lithium, all the physical properties about lithium. It's going to give you... Um, uh, just basically all the physical properties that you that, they, that we've discovered about lithium. So melting point, boiling point, the density, year discovery, um, and then a little bit more, even more information for those of you who are looking for fours above proficiency on some of uh, your uh, practice activities in lab. So that's the website you could use to um, find out more information about the periodic table of elements. There's also on this website, you can, after you get done with the notes, you can play this, the game, okay, name that atom. So you can go to the, that website and you can play a game and um, figure out what type of atom it is. This will be a good review um, for you to do after you finish your notes. Okay, so let's take a look at the structure of the periodic table. So when you look at the periodic table, you see something like this, okay? And on my periodic table, the name for the element is usually underneath the symbol. This top number is the atomic number. Now remember what I just said. Periodic table is arranged by increasing atomic number. So that's why if you take a look at a periodic table, let me get to this one, ah. Okay, if you look at the periodic table, it's arranged by increasing atomic number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So they, it's arranged by increasing atomic number. So the atomic number, and yes, you're going to make sure you put all this in your notes. The atomic number is the number at the top. The atomic number tells you the number of protons an atom has. So sodium, which is uh, Na, Sodium has 11 protons. That's its atomic number. So the periodic table is really arranged by increasing number of protons. The reason why is the number of protons of an atom never changes. Sodium is the only element with 11 protons. No other element on the periodic table has the same number of protons. That's why number of protons determines what element, what atom you're looking at. Now, if you know the number of protons, you also know the number of electrons. Remember from that web quest you did on atoms? You should have read about how the positive charges, protons, must equal the negative charges, electrons, for an atom to be stable. In order for an atom to be stable, it has to have no charge. So the number of protons and electrons have to equal each other. Positive and negative charges have to equal each other in order for an atom to exist. So, this number also tells you the number of electrons. Now, number of electrons will not determine the atom because number of electrons can change. So, that's a pretty important concept. Protons, the number of protons never change. But the number of electrons can change. And they will change when, at, when elements start to bond. So that's why we do not define an atom by a number of electrons. We define them by the number of protons. Now when you also look at your um, 
periodic table. The symbol is there. Now you're probably asking me, okay, Ms. Stevens, why is it sodium and it's, the symbol's not an S? Why is it in A? A lot of times they use the Latin words or symbols for sodium. So the Latin symbol for sodium would be Na. Okay. Atomic mass. This is the mass of the nucleus. Remember, the nucleus of the atom contains protons plus neutrons. Now, usually, if you look at a single atom of sodium, then you will have a whole number for the atomic mass, which would be around 22 or 23. When you look at the periodic table, this number right here with the decimal is what we call a weighted average. So some sodium atoms have different numbers of neutrons. That's called an isotope, which you, um, when you made the model of the atoms, okay, you had isotopes of hydrogen, I believe. So if you have different number of neutrons, it's called an isotope. So what that weighted average is, is it's showing you all the sodium atoms. We take an average of how many sodium atoms have this amount have, usually it's going to be either 11 or 12 neutrons. And they take a weighted average of that and you get a decimal. Okay, so the atomic mass is the number of protons plus neutrons. So if you know the number of protons from the atomic number 11, then you can tell me how many neutrons sodium has. Okay, so let's take a look at that for a minute. Let me get my pen. If you know that sodium has 11 protons, and you know the atomic mass, and when we do this, we always round. So 22.9 would round up to 23. So the atomic mass is 23. You know protons plus neutrons give you that atomic mass. So 11 plus what number of neutrons is going to give you 23? So what you do is you take 23, which is the atomic mass, Subtract the number of protons, which is 11, okay, or the atomic number, and you're going to get 12. So now you know how many neutrons sodium usually has. It's 12 neutrons because 11 plus 12 gives me 23. That's my atomic mass, protons plus neutrons, because that's what's in the nucleus of an atom. So that is how, when we look at a periodic table, we can tell the number of protons, number of electrons, number of neutrons. Okay, when we look at a periodic table, we also have um, different ways of classing our periodic table, not just by atomic number. Elements are put into three classifications. Elements are either metals, nonmetals, or metalloids. Metals are usually elements that are shiny or metallic. They're good conductors of heat and electricity, meaning heat and electricity energy will flow through these elements. All metals except for mercury, which is what HG is, that's the symbol for mercury, are solids at room temperature. So all your metals are solids at room temperature except for mercury, which is actually a liquid. All metals are ductile and malleable, meaning you can bend them. And your metals are located on the left side of the periodic table and the middle. So right here, metals, which is this tan color, they're on the left side of the periodic table and the middle, except for this first one, which is hydrogen. That one is not a metal. Okay. Then we classify elements as nonmetals. Nonmetals are dull. They're poor conductors of heat and electricity. They're usually gases at room temperature, except for bromine, which is a liquid at room temperature. And they're brittle, meaning they break very easily. Your nonmetals are located on this right hand side, along with hydrogen. Then, metalloids. Metalloids are, have characteristics of both metals and nonmetals. They are solids at room temperature, and they are semiconductors, which is used in electrical devices. So semiconductor means they somewhat transmit 
heat and electricity. That's why we use them a lot in computers. Metalloids, real easy way to remember where metalloids at. You start here. You're going to make a ladder. You're going to go diagonal all the way down. Okay? And then the two middle stairs have one to the left. So two elements above from the bottom of the diagonal have one next to it that are also metalloids. So that's how I remember metalloids. Okay, I just take this top one right here, I go all the way down. Okay, I know all those elements are metalloids. And then I go up two from the last one. And I know this one's a metalloid and this one's a metalloid. So here's a bigger picture, or here's a bigger picture of the periodic table. Okay, so you've got your metalloid starting with boron, go do diagonal all the way down, and then, oh, this one actually includes, I forgot, it includes this one, so it's the last three that have the metalloids, I apologize. So that is your, how we classify our periodic table. Metals in tan, non-metals in blue, metalloids in the green. So why is the periodic table so important to understand and why is the atomic, the atomic structure so important? So based on the atomic structure, scientists can identify any matter in the universe. So if we go out to a planet and we take back samples from the planet, we can identify what that matter is made up of. We can tell if there's carbon in that rock, if there's iron in that rock, because if we look at our periodic table, Carbon, which is C, has six protons. So if we find that in a rock sample, we know six protons is carbon. So we can say that rock has carbon in it. Okay. If we want to find iron, which is Fe, we find matter that contains 26 protons. Those atoms have 26 protons. And we can say that rock sample also has iron in it. So we can describe all matter in the universe using the periodic table because we know the number of protons tell you which type of atom it is. So we can find out what metals are present, what non-metals are present, what metalloids are present in our universe. Atoms tell us about the matter. That is why knowing the atomic structure, knowing the parts, protons, electrons, neutrons, knowing how they're organized, knowing how the periodic table displays that information, we can classify all matter in our known universe. So, hopefully after today, you should be able to look at that periodic table, tell me what the atomic number tells you, tell me what the atomic mass tells you. You should be able to look at the periodic table, I should be able to give you an element like uh, beryllium, you should be able to tell me how many protons, electrons, and neutrons that atom has. And based on that, you should be able to tell me why that helps us found, that's our foundation for chemistry.